So we moved into this house last fall, and I wanted to wait till spring to redo the front garden. I'm going to redo the edging, and um, something that's going to match the garage I thought would be really nice, because the rocks that they have around it now help keep the soil from eroding, but I don't like the way they look. So I'm going to make my own stones from concrete poured into molds, and I'm making them in the shape of wood because our garage doors are wooden. So let me go show you the edging that's on there now and how I can make an edging that would match the garage. It would look really nice. stones I'm making. You can see the top layer is dyed brown and the back is just gray concrete. They're a little filthy but you can see that wooden texture from the molds that I use that I purchased on eBay from a seller in the Ukraine. So this is my setup. Now I'll show you how I do it. I use these dividers made of milk carton because they're waterproof because the plastic molds there are 23 and a half inches by 7 and 3 fourths inches. They are plastic so you'll want to cover them with a good coating of vegetable oil because of the deep grooves. Get it all in the grooves and even around the divider that I used. And then after you have them all nice and coated, um, we're going to prepare for the concrete. Concrete is very, very dusty and you don't want it in your lungs and you don't want it in your eyes. And of course this here is the dye, concrete dye that you can get at Home Depot and I don't want that on my hands so I use the gloves. Now I stir it up because it is quite thick. It's almost like paint. It's got a real thick texture to it so you want to take like a knife there, a butter knife and stir it up really good. And then I measure in my bucket, empty bucket, um, two and a half cups of water. Now the water looks kind of brown because I rinsed off my knife in it but that's okay because that's the water we're going to use anyway. So there's my second cup, um, like I said, a total of two and a half cups of water, just regular tap water. Then I'm going to shake that dye again because it is so thick and nice. And I'm going to be pouring in a total of three-fourths cup of dye to go with the two and a half cups of water, which will give you a light to medium brown. Now if you want a darker brown, just add more dye. Now you add it just to the water before adding the concrete, so you can stir it together like with a fork in the water, the dye and the water. This is a professional grade concrete, that's builder's grade concrete. The professional grade concrete in the white is much finer, doesn't have the pebbles in it. Now when you're using concrete you want to cover your nose and mouth and you want to cover your eyes because concrete is very dusty and of course when it mixes with water that's not a good thing. So you just add the concrete, see the eye cover there, Add the concrete one cup at a time and stir constantly, making sure there's no chunks and lumps in it. Just add it one cup at a time and stir and just make sure it um, gets to the consistency of like a thick, nice cake batter. Then you're ready to take a scoop and scoop it into your molds. Okay, so you should have enough to cover the very bottom of this 23 and a half inch by 7 and 3 fourth inch mold and make sure that it spreads out nice and that you're covering every single corner on the bottom face of the mold. Then shake it really good. Try to vibrate those bubbles out because the air bubbles will show up if you don't vibrate them like that. So hold your divider in place and vibrate it really good for quite a while until the air bubbles um, seem that they've gone out. Okay, now I finished both of them with the dyed concrete. Now I'm going to pour in two and a half cups of water again, only this time I'm not going to put dye in it. I'm going to fill in the backing with the builder's grade concrete, which does have the large pebbles. It doesn't get that nice, clean, sharp finish that the professional grade concrete has. But the builder's grade concrete is only like around $2.50 a bag, whereas the professional grade concrete is more around $20 a bag. So by filling in the back of your stones with the cheaper concrete, it's a less expensive way to do it, but it's just as effective. Again, be sure you add one cup at a time and stir and stir and stir and constantly stir. Then fill those in and same thing, 
give it a good uh, pounding on the concrete as you might call it or a vibration to get those bubbles out because those air bubbles will show and cause more of a chance of cracking if you leave the air bubbles in so now I'm done and I've let them dry overnight I've brought them inside for more of a controlled climate because they are still somewhat wet not a whole lot but you can see they pop right out because you oiled your containers to begin with so you should be able to just turn them over and pop them out and you'll see that they are a little bit um, moist on top but they should keep their firm um, shape they should be nice and hard you shouldn't be able to put your fingerprint in it or anything but you can see just the top part is dyed brown the rest of it can be painted if you want or just left because the facing is the only part you'll see from the street I zoomed in here real close so that you could see the bubbles. Um, there would be a lot fewer bubbles if I would have taken the time to bang it against the concrete floor a little bit longer and get those out while it was still wet. Now this uh, quick drying concrete sets within 5 to 10 minutes. So while it's still in that um, liquid form, it needs to be vibrated. Here is a set that's already dry, and it doesn't have as many bubbles, but as you can see, there are still some there. So it just shows the importance of having to vibrate or bang out those bubbles while it's still in a liquid form. And my little kitty cat and my son are having fun watching them dry. It's been about an hour or so, so let's look down at them and we can see that there are patches of dry spots and it doesn't look so glossy now. But on the finished product, I'm just going to do light touches of paint to highlight those ridges of the wood texture. This paint I'm using, I got at Walmart. Um, it is an outdoor masonry, stucco, and brick paint. So it should be good for the concrete bricks. And I'm just using one of those straight foam little brushes. Um, and I'm just dipping the barely the tip of it in the paint so that I can not have so much that it gets down into the grooves. But it stays on top and just highlights the ridges and really brings out that wood texture. So if you're happy with the color of dye that your bricks ended up with, you'll just want to highlight those ridges and show that wood grain texture. But on this second brick, I'm going to be painting it um, thoroughly without showing the wood grain texture. I'm going to turn my brush sideways and get down inside those grooves and I'm going to thoroughly cover it with paint. Now when it's dry you'll still be able to see the wood grain texture but um, I liked the darker color of the paint to go with my garage doors. Now I'm doing the sides here but I won't be doing the bottom because the bottom part will be buried in the ground. Um, so when it's dry you can actually see that some of the dye color did kind of show through so there's still a little bit of a two-tone color there on the front and sides if you want it just a flat color obviously you'd probably give it another coat of paint but it still looks real good and you can still see that wood grain texture so I dug a trench and filled it with pea gravel and packed it down really good and then I'm setting the stones in place and pack them really good front and back with the soil. Okay. So the trench then is probably about three or four inches deep um, to give a nice deep trench. And then I fill it with that pea gravel and I pound the pea gravel down pretty tight um, and make sure that it's all nice and level. Then I start to place my bricks in. Now notice I have them one in front of the other to give it more of a depth of texture. And I get them all in place and I pound them. I take them and, you know, just kind of pound them on top of that pea gravel. And then I get them all set in place and fill it in with the soil. And I push the soil down really good and chop it down in with my little digger and make sure that it's all, there are no pockets of air. And then, as you can see, you can see the tops aren't painted yet. I'm going to paint the top so that you can't see it. Now, we did go ahead and stain those garage doors a lot nicer, darker color. And now the dark paint that I painted the edging matches them really good. So you have the wood texture to match the wooden doors. And it all looks nice and even. It's very solid and steady. Now it's a very thick a concrete wall there to keep the soil in 
and to keep the grass from getting through I made sure there were no gaps between the bricks that I placed in the ground. Oh, we have a little visitor coming across the driveway. These big rabbits enjoy our yard quite a bit. So he's enjoying the edging from the other side. So you can see the edging has a nice color to match the dark bricks of the house. It's a brown brick there. And uh, we'll go check on our little visitor over here. And just make sure that you get the stones about the same depth so that they look nice and even. And, uh, oh, there's our little bunny hiding behind the bush. Let's see if we can get a closer look. There he is. My hand's shaking because I've been working so much. It's kind of like fatigued. But anyway, that's the edging. This is it from a farther away view. Hope you enjoyed the project. Now you know how to make your own handmade concrete bricks that look like wood. And you can dye them and paint them just right. So enjoy your project if you decide to take it on and see what you can do. Thank you.